shoulder, uh, the, the average daily traffic, percentage of trucks, et cetera, uh, whether there's a sidewalk and the width of the sidewalk. And what we come, we come out with for the bicycle level of service is that level of service A and B can accommodate uh, no, uh, children or, or casual adult cyclists. And then we get into C, it's more intermediate. And then level of service E and F are for advanced, um, advanced uh, riders. So what we've done through uh, previous studies is we've we've uh, had level of service on our major uh, major roads. We are we need to do level of service in Duxbury and Hanover because those haven't those were added to our region. So those that's something that we have to add to the uh, to the study. Um, safe routes to schools. Um, we have a list of safe routes to schools. And um, partners in, in our in our uh, region, um, we we have some that are not enrolled: Bridgewater, Hanover, Kingston, Plymouth, Whitman. But most of our towns do participate. Um, and also, uh, complete streets communities, <coughs> uh, which is um, uh, also enhances our pedestrian and bicycle network. It's a great program in Massachusetts where, where towns can participate and uh, get uh, some funding. Uh, and there's different uh, different levels um, registered um, policies. The, the town has to, in order to participate, the town has to um, uh, adopt uh, approved policies. Um, they have to create a prioritization plan. And then the last step is they get approved projects and they get money for uh, for um, for projects. Um, what's coming next? We have a story map, an interactive map, which I haven't gone live yet. Um, so we, we can put that on our website and um, we can have a, a lot of planned improvement projects or, or potential uh, projects uh, not yet programmed. Um, this is one example of potential improvements in West Bridgewater. This is an old abandoned right of way. The green part is actually already a bicycle path. And um, the, the yellow is potential for unobstructive, unobstructive uh, right of way. Uh, there are some existing properties have all, all already encroached on this right of way, but uh, there is potential for a uh, a rail to trail here. Um, so that's that's those are kind of the highlights of our of our um, uh, our study, our active transportation study. Um, so I can uh, answer any questions that anyone might have, or any comments. Ray, I'd like to share with the communities that are with us today uh, what we do in Stoughton on the planning board that I think may be helpful to increasing pedestrian safety at a zero cost to all the communities present. We, when we have a commercial project, if there's a crosswalk or a, a questionable or dangerous intersection, anywhere near that potential business applicant, we automatically as mitigation apply to that project, uh, upgrades to signals that are there or the putting up signals that are, that are not there, uh, adding the signals. And um, so, I, and it, this is solely at the cost of the developer. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that when you have a commercial project in your towns that you uh, notify your planning boards that uh, this can be an integral part of the of the approval process. Yeah, right. Thank yep, you, that, that definitely helps. Yeah. I think, uh, Any other Vivi comments? I think Vivian Ortiz has her hand raised. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I am the representative for the Safe Routes to School program. Thank you for that presentation and a person that rides a bicycle pretty much full time. So I really enjoyed seeing that. Um, I just want to clarify a couple of things when the slide showed the number of um, communities that are safe routes to school partners. 
basically that means that they signed a, a you know they came on board to become partner schools with us but that does not necessarily mean that they're actively engaged with us so um like the rich the richard wilkins project is something that i could definitely use some help with connecting with the principal because i've never had the opportunity to do that um and following up on what the gentleman from stoughton had just said about what what happens at the planning process meeting i'm sorry i'm getting the words wrong but um, another really free resource is making sure that the students know how to use the crosswalk and have some yeah. bicycle safety education, which is what our program does. So any help, any support. Um, last year, we basically lost a year because of COVID. So we're starting back up. I really want to be able to do some stuff with the Wilkins because the wonderful improvements that you all are going to make are going to be great, but we need to make sure that there's some education that goes along that. So I'm going to just take this moment as well to plug the fact that we have a signs and lines information session that's coming up. So signs and lines is funding that comes from MassDOT. It's not a huge amount of money, but it helps communities, schools to do exactly that. Paint some signs, pavement markings and um, additional signage to kind of highlight some of the areas that, that the municipalities have identified could be improved related to the schools. So I put that information in the chat and I'm gonna go ahead and click and would love for you guys to register so that when you're working with the schools and your communities, you know what these projects are, what the needs are, and you can go ahead and, and um, sign up for um, the grants, okay? Thank you. Thank, thank you, thank you, Vivian. Um, I, I noticed that when I, I did this um, research that um, uh, th there's a lot more information about the Safe Routes to School. Uh, that information was taken from your website and I, and I know they do have the status of the schools, like some of them have not been active and some have been more active and it, it's very detailed about, but it was too much detail for me to put in the presentation. No, uh, no, no, that's fine, that's fine. You know? and, but when Paul it, yeah, was I, still I, here, I worked with him on, on I, did, yeah. I let him know that some yeah, schools so, have been some, partners for a long time and we just right, need to make right. sure they're all active. So. Right, and, and some have a lot of programs going on, that, and some some have you know just been active in a little bit in the past, and some have have more much more activity. So, yeah, it's it's very detailed. So, so yeah. thanks. So, thank you. Yep. Any other comments? Thank you all. Thank you, Ray, very much. Great presentation. You're welcome. Um, I'm going to move on to the O'Colony Climate Change Vulnerability Transportation Assessment, and that would be you again, Ray. Thank you. I'm going to uh, try to share my screen again. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> wish me luck. Uh, this is um, this is very exciting here. I hope you can see this. Um, yes. This is something that we developed uh, thanks to um, Andrew and uh, Quo Jang, it's called a story map, and you can get to this from our website, from OCPC website. Um, so it it has it it has an interactive map, and it also has the um, uh, the PowerPoint slides. So you can go on our website, and you can see the PowerPoint here, which um, which I updated from a previous uh, presentation. Um, it tells us, uh, you know, what climate change is. This is a picture of, I believe, Bridge Street in Bridgewater, and the road had collapsed um, because of uh, we had a, an event, a heavy rain event in March of 2010. Um, and uh, so, so what I did was I offered some more update information on climate change in Massachusetts. Um, and actually, this is this is uh, not Massachusetts. This is in the in the across the country. In the United States, the greenhouse gas emissions by economic sector. So transportation is 29 makes up 29 percent of the greenhouse gas emissions in in the country. Um, you can see how much is uh, greenhouse gas is emitted for other uses, industry, electricity, commercial, and residential. So how much you add to greenhouse gas from your home, and also agriculture. Um, this is in the United States total carbon emissions by transportation mode. So you can see this big green, uh, the green part with passenger vehicles and heavy trucks across the United States. This is not greenhouse gases, but this is just, this is greenhouse gases, but just the carbon emissions part of the greenhouse gas. You can see the, the, the great amount of uh, carbon dioxide is produced by transportation. And, and there's a reason why I'm showing this information because um, this is this is that same 
street uh, before it's, it's been fixed now. Um, the FHWA has, um, in, in response to uh, climate change, has um, uh, focused on transportation systems management and operations need to adapt to cost-effective strategies to minimize climate change and extreme weather. Um, and this is the response in Massachusetts. We have the, what's important here is the Global Warming Solutions Act and our um, Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program uh, in response to uh, getting the, the communities to uh, adapt and, and come up with strategies for climate change. And also the state's uh, uh, strategies, which actually isn't on here, but um, it's here which is the uh, roadmap to 2050 decarbonization plan. So this is why the, those earlier um, graphs that I showed you, which, which showed a lot of carbon emissions from transportation, the response in Massachusetts is, is a roadmap to decarbonization. Um, and uh, there's, there are two plans. There's one, the plan uh, decarbonization plan, and also the um, clean energy and climate pl uh, plan which uh, um, is available both online um, through the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. They're, they're focusing on that carbon and the, en and the use of um, en uh, energies that produce fossil fuels that, that produce carbon. Uh, so they want to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by at least 85% by 2050. And also the uh, Massachusetts has um, signed with Connecticut, Rhode Island, and the District of Columbia a program, the uh, Transportation Climate Initiative, which is a, which is a cap and trade, uh, caps the uh, amount of carbon dioxide released from uh, vehicles using transportation fuels. So they're focusing on that, that transportation part of the graph to reduce fuels. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a cap on, on the amount of carbon dioxide to be released and uh, there's an auction held for um, su fuel suppliers uh, to buy those allowances. Uh, that, so Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and the District of Columbia have signed on, but they're still waiting for the other Northeast uh, states and the district uh, and, uh, to, to sign on. Um, and the money that they raise from uh, the sale of, of, of the um, allowances at, au at auction, they're going to uh, invest into modernizing the transportation system and combating climate change. Um, and this is from the state's um, 20, uh, decarbonization plan. So, so the focus is going to be, as I said, on transportation to uh, to cut down on carbon emissions, um, alternative fuels, um, also buildings. Uh, they're, they're looking at um, um, reducing um, fossil fuel use in, in buildings uh, and, and, and the en energy supply they're transferring to uh, wind and solar power and a more diverse mix of energy uh, resources. Um, and in agriculture, focusing on reducing um, carbon emissions from agriculture um, and um, in forests and other natural working uh, managed forests to enhance uh, car carbon sequest sequestration. Um, so this this is uh, available on our website. And if you scroll down from the uh, uh, the uh, presentation, we have an interactive map. And it shows it should show uh, different locations infrastructure locations in our region that are vulnerable to flooding. And also if there's any projects that, uh, and this is, this didn't go to, it should go to Abington. So I don't know why it didn't. Well, you can, you can scroll around the map and it has the locations. Here's Abington, which is number one here. You can, you can focus right in. And also you can click on, oh, there it is. Okay. And it, it'll 
have a little summary of what's going on at that location. Um, and there's a tip. There's a tip project there in Abington, in, which is right next to Central Street to replace the bridge. You scroll down a little bit more. We go to uh, the projects in Bridgewater. Uh, this, this was a replacement of the bridge, which took place in 2008 um, in Bridgewater and Bridge Street. We have that uh, scene that I showed before where there was flooding. It uh, washed out the road right, right before the bridge. If you click on this here, you can bring this up and it has more information on the location. There's the before and after pictures. Okay. Um, Bridgewater again, Brockton. Uh, what I did for Brockton, Brockton has a um, municipal vulner vulnerability plan, uh, preparedness plan. You can click on here and it, this map shows the Salisbury Brook, which goes Salisbury River, which goes right down the center of, of uh, might have to make it a little bit bigger. And the Trout Brook, which goes right down the center of the, of the city. And there's, we can, we can offer some information from their um, MVP plan and some of their, some of the things that they're working on there to uh, control flooding. So we have a, a number of projects and we, throughout the, the region, um, bridge replacements and flooding. And also when we get down to Duxbury, we talk about sea rise, which is different problems uh, on along the coast. Um, Duxbury is working, uh, developing a, a sea level rise uh, uh, plan, as well as Kingston is a consultant working uh, on a sea level rise plan for Kingston. And Kingston Center. Uh, in, in Plymouth, we have the Eel River. And this is Route 3A. We can see how close Route 3A is to the coast. And you can see the Eel River goes right underneath there. And this is a picture of that same river. There was a project. Uh, the bridge was replaced in 2004. Uh, Taylor Ave was also um, reconstructed. So we can add projects here and it'll to our story map and it'll automatically go to our website uh, and be updated so people can look at it themselves and explore it. And the last piece on here was, I thought this was pretty interesting, the climate change vulnerability. Uh, this is, has to do with um, hurricanes um, and Category one, two, three, and four hurricanes. Category uh, four is in red. We've never had a category four hurricane in Massachusetts, but you can see the inundation it would do. Uh, category one and two would actually impact route three over here near Pembroke and, and Norwell right here. And you could see it would impact all this area back into Pembroke as well in, as Marshfield. Um, and a little bit further south, it, it's going to impact Kingston and Route 3 in Kingston, a Category 1 or 2 hurricane. And this goes further down the coast along Plymouth. Um, category 3 hurricane would go right over Taylor Ave, which was just reconstructed. So if anybody, uh, people can actually go online and, and explore this themselves, and we can actually add information to it. Um, we can update the information. It will automatically go right to the story map. So um, we, we, uh, we have also developed uh, the report. We have a, a draft report, which will also be online for people to review for the, for the climate change um, study. So if anyone has any questions or comments, I'll be happy to happy to answer. Any comments? 
Thank you so much, Ray. That was great. You're welcome. Moving on to eight, which is other business, which is community local technical assistance studies. And that would be Bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so just a brief update. Uh, you can see on your screen, we've completed a few um, requests for our communities uh, over the last couple months. We, Avon uh, did some data collection analysis for 28 at um, East and West Spring Street and also Route 28 Harrison Boulevard. And that'll feed right into um, that initiated project that the, it was just recently initiated. So uh, we're happy to help out there. East Bridgewater, uh, we did a traffic study for East Street, a couple of traffic studies in Stoughton, one for, uh, uh, well, three actually, one uh, traffic study and speed analysis for Turnpike Street, and then uh, a couple uh, other traffic studies, one for Elm Street and one for Walnut Street. And we do have one new request. Uh, this actually uh, came from a road safety audit of Commerce Way. Uh, the town of Plymouth uh, is interested in establishing a speed limit on Commerce Way. So um, we'll be doing traffic counts for that uh, this fall. And uh, other than that, uh, as, you can, as I scroll through, you can see um, the status update of existing projects. Thank you, Bill. Any questions for Bill? Hearing none, I'm going to move forward to B, which are your staff reviews on ENFs, EIRs, and MPCs. That would be Kyle. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so we have one new ENF that was submitted to the NEPA office um, since the last JTC meeting, and that's for the former National Fireworks Site in Hanover and yeah, Hanover Hanson. Um, so this is for the hazardous material remediation within Factory Pond at the former National Fireworks Site. And the preferred alternative would be the installation of roughly 46,000 square feet of sheet pile to isolate roughly four and a half acres associated with the high metal density area in Factory Pond. And once they do this, they'll begin dredging operations within that area. And then once dredged, the contaminated sediment that's gonna be processed on site, upland and transported to an upland location prior to transportation off site. And next there's three certificates. Um, the first one is for the Jenny Pond dredging project in Plymouth. And this certificate states that the project does not require an EIR. And the next is for the Aldana Road land swap in Halifax. And the certificate states that the project does not require an EIR. And the last certificate is for Lincoln Park in West Bridgewater. And the certificate states that the project does require an environmental impact report. And lastly, we have a public notice for the city of Brockton. It's a notice of availability of the draft resource management plan for Monponset Pond. Uh, and it's the report and a public meeting notice. Um, the virtual public meeting was held August 3rd, so two days ago. And this project, the report addresses the resource management plan requirements of the May 21st, 2019 amendment to the administrative consent order. And the ACO defines the resource management plan as recommending metrics and procedures for Silver Lake diversions and Stumpbrook Dam operations intended to improve Monponset Pond's water quality and ecosystem while maintaining Brockton's drinking water supply reliability. And that concludes my staff report for MEPA. If anybody has any questions, I can answer them. You don't have any questions for Kyle? Thank you, Kyle, so much. You're welcome. I'm gonna move on to item three, regional concerns and local community transportation issues. Uh, open up the meeting. If anyone has any questions or comments. Madam Chair. Yes. Abington. A um, lot of, uh, I guess, uh, Chapter 90 money has been used to pave streets in Abington, Lincoln Street, portions of Hancock Street, portions of Washington Street. It's, it's great to see. Uh, I 
work for MRPC, but I'm working out my front window of my house and I can't help but be distracted when they were cold planing, paving Lincoln Street, but I'm sure my bosses at MRPC are happy about that. The other thing is uh, they moved the bridge on Route 18 over the train tracks and uh, that was supposed to be done this summer and that was done. Uh, you get to see that because our vet's office is right near there. So that's another important milestone with Route 18, uh, the project of repaving that and things like that. So uh, anyway, uh, lots of good things happening in Abington in our area. You know, I also wanted to appreciate, wanted to tell you guys, great comment, uh, great, uh, great uh, content at this meeting today, by the way. Great compliments to all the OCPC staff. Really great job this morning. That doesn't have to do with local, but that's just a nice compliment. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Any other comments? Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, I'd like to take a moment. I understand that there's some transitions uh, forthcoming at MassDOT, and I believe Ben Muller is on the, still on the call. So I'd just like to publicly thank and recognize Ben Muller for the almost last three years of excellent uh, transportation planning and liaison assistance from the MassDOT planning office. Ben, you've been uh, super responsive and wonderful to work with. I understand you're sliding over to a, a different role at MassDOT District 6 office, but uh, on behalf of OCPC, we wanted to wish you uh, best of luck and uh, thank you so much for all the technical assistance and guidance that you've provided to us. Uh, we certainly appreciate uh, the person you are and the planner that you are, and uh, we wish you well. Unless you change your mind and you're staying. So. <laughs> Congratulations, Ben. Good luck in your new position from all of us. Congratulations, Ben. Congratulations. Congratulations. Do I have any other comments? Thank you all for coming. Uh, we always appreciate that and for your input. Um, I'm gonna move to nine for adjournment. Do I have a motion on the floor? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Have a good weekend and see you at our next meeting. Bye, Thank everyone. you all. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone. Thank you. Thank you.